Hello, Justin here. Welcome to another video. This is how to achieve um, a usable tone out of a solid state amp. This video is not entitled How do you get a tube like tone out of a solid state amp? That's just physically impossible. Um, solid state amps are just not able to recreate the clarity, the warmth, the presence, and the headroom that the tube amp is going to be going to be able to offer. That being said, there are several advantages of getting a solid state amp over a tube amp, and I'm going to just name these three things. Um, firstly, they're really cheap. Um, they're quite easy to half the price of a tube amp, let's say. So, uh, for the same price, you're either going to get an entry level tube amp or quite easily a mid range um, solid state amplifier, and that's going to have more EQ options, it's going to be quite possibly bigger, uh, with a bigger speaker cabinet and bigger speakers. That's a really big plus, and it might also have effects as well. So, um, see what you want. Uh, number two, um, you are able to practice at bedroom levels with a solid state amp a lot more easily than a tube amp. A tube amp, if you know how it works, uh, they sound better as they get cranked up. So that is not very good for those of us who own, uh, I mean I own a 15 watt tube amp and I can only get a really nice uh, breakup when I have the tube, when I have the amp running at a volume past, um, past 12 o'clock. That's really, really loud. I mean, the neighbors have begun to complain, and I've never had received complaints from neighbors before until I bought a TBAM. So, you might want to consider getting a solid state amp because a solid state amp, um, the tone characteristics stay the same regardless of the volume. So, if you're, if you're practicing at volume 3, um, your tone is going to sound the same. It's going to retain the tone characteristics even at volume 1. So, you know, if you really want to practice your speed legs at 2 o'clock in the morning, this kind of amp is the way to go. You know? <laughs> It just, it just has, it just, you're just able to do that. A tube amp can't really do that. And lastly, a solid state amp is more reliable than a tube amp. Um, solid state amps, well, they don't have tubes, so they will last a lot longer. There's some people who buy a tube amp and within the first week, something happens. Um, I bought my, with my tube amp, um, it's lasted me like two weeks before the power amp started to give problems. You know that that and you know it's just a being that we have to live with uh, for tube amps. A solid state amp, regardless of how many years it's played it, it's gonna sound the same. I mean, as long as the chips don't fry or the fuse doesn't blow or the the the, the, the circuit board doesn't melt, you know, you have a pretty decent. Uh, you you gonna much you gonna pretty much have the same tone uh, for many years to come if you take care of your solid state amp. Um, a side note, for those of us who are performing live on stage, a solid state amp is pretty light. It's a lot lighter than a tube amp, so if you have back problems or if you're going to be touring frequently and just need a simple stage monitor, it doesn't make sense to carry a 50 pound, uh, 15 watt tube amp. I mean, I might as well carry a, a you know, uh, I might as well carry a 15 pound um, a solid state amp for the, same, for the same purpose, and that's just going to be a lot easier. Okay, so let's examine our specimen for today. This is a Marshall MG15 CDR. Um, it is a 15 watt, 10 inch speaker um, amplifier, and it is an ideal practice amp. You know, it's pretty easy to get tones out of it. Um, in a general rule is that solid state amps tend to be very treble heavy, so you might want to roll off the treble just a little bit. So let's start over here and just roll off the treble just a tad bit, you know, you don't want, you don't want too much of a treble roll off to get, uh, you don't want it to be muddy. So, um, while I say this, guitars naturally, the guitar's natural voice is in the mid-range, and if you have the mid-control, in this case on Marsh Amplifiers as a counter-control, uh, you, can, you can afford to crank that considerably, like, um, I normally like to keep mine at around, uh, around 3 o'clock, but that's just me. Um, and for all intents and purposes, the bass control isn't really going to change much uh, of your tone in, on, on, a, on such a small amp. So, uh, but you do want a bit of a body and you do want a bit of, um, you do want to get a bit of that bottom man uh, to, to sort of um, support your, to your overdriven tone a lot, especially. So um, just don't be afraid to crank it up a bit more as well. So, um, and for, for the overdrive, Okay, I don't like to have the overdrive really, really high. In fact, I'm keeping it at 12 o'clock, and that gives me a healthy amount of gain. Because in my, to my ears, um, a solid state amp, when you push it a bit too hard, it just sounds fizzy. It doesn't have that warmth that gets accentuated on a tube amp, let's say. So you can afford to keep that at around 12 o'clock. <laughs>
final tip for those of us with guitars that are a lot more brighter sounding, a lot more harsher. Um, when you play it through this kind of amps, you're going to get a very brittle sound and that may not be the kind of sound that you like. How do you remove that harshness or how do you remove that, you know, that brittleness in the sound? Um, you can stick a volume pedal in front of it and more specifically, if you stick a cheap volume pedal like the Boss MV50 here, um, that's, good, that's going to uh, roll off the top end just a little bit, you know, uh, and it's not it's not as bad as people say, it's not signal degradation, it's not a very it's it's not as negative as people make it out to be. Actually it's quite musically pleasant because when you stick this guy in front and you roll off the top end, uh, you're gonna get you're just gonna remove that harshness and the brittleness out there. So and besides you should get a volume pedal anyway because it is it is the most important pedal after your tuner. So I hope you found these uh, I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you have any questions, comments, raves or rants, you can post them in the comment box down below and I will try my best to get back to you as soon as I can. This is Justin signing off. Thank you for watching.